Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting a watercolour autumn landscape. It's across a lake and it's a tutorial, suitable for beginners. This is a photograph I took of Climbrian, which is a reservoir fairly close to where I live that I visit quite often. It's a beautiful spot. A few weeks ago I did a demonstration painting of this view with some summer flowers looking across the lake and I'll give you a link to that in the uh, description box. Today I'm doing more of a tutorial painting of a similar view. It won't be summer but it's an autumn scene. This is the photograph I'm using, taking inspiration from. Don't be too worried about it, I know it looks very very cluttered and you think I can't possibly paint anything like that. But this is the point of the tutorial, what I'm hoping to do is show you give you some ideas if you've got such a busy painting like this. I'm, I'm hoping I can give you some ideas on how you can simplify it and tackle the areas one at a time. What's nice about this as a reference for a landscape painting is that you've got three different planes. You've got a distant plane, the distant hills. You've got the middle plane, which are the autumny colours and the trees. And then you've got this foreground area. So you've got these three separate planes, if you like to call them that, in the picture, which will really help with your landscape painting. If you're painting in a representational sort of way, even if it's loose, then I feel if you're going to do a landscape painting, you really do need to think about having these three different areas in your painting to give you this feeling of recession. So we're going to be working on the distant hills, we're going to be working on this middle ground, and then we're going to be looking at this foreground and simplifying it. This is the pencil drawing that I worked from. Um, if you would like a copy of this, um, you can visit my website. There is a link in the description box where you can download this if you want to, and also the photograph. It's a very loose drawing because if you follow my channel, you know that I am a loose painter. I like to pencil out the main areas where they are. So we've got the distant hills, we've got those in place. We've got the middle ground and then I've put in some lines to show where the main trees are and some indication of the foreground. You'll see as I work along that I will adjust slightly and add more trees and more details and more branches. There's not a lot of point working in the loose way of doing a very detailed pencil drawing. What I will do is use a, a very fine brush to um, paint in more of the branches and the twigs and doing some work on the foreground with a smaller brush. I am using a little bit of masking fluid just on the foreground in this painting. I find this helps because if I don't do this then I can get the foreground too blocked in and um, overworked. If you don't like using masking fluid then um, you could put a little bit of gouache on at the end to lighten areas up if you find you have done that but I would recommend if you don't like masking fluid I would recommend giving it another go and I do have a video that you can have a look at to help you um, to to apply it and I'll give the link below. So what I'm doing here is I'm just masking out with a small brush some of the leaves and I'm also masking out some lines that stand for these brambles that um, are in the foreground as well. You'll be able to see that I used a, a, a very small little round brush, an old brush, for doing the leaves and then I switched to an older rigger. Um, using the rigger then you can get these very fine lines going across, otherwise it's quite difficult to do that. So all the time when I'm applying the masking fluid I keep rinsing the brushes out in some water with detergent in it just to keep the masking fluid from becoming too blocked into the into the bristles of the brushes and this seems to work very well. Once the masking fluid is on and is completely dry then you can be very free with the washers behind the areas where you've put the masking fluid on. You can drop colours in and be quite free and quite loose with your painting and then when you rub the masking fluid off you can be a little bit more detailed then on adding some of the autumn colour to the leaves. 
So I started first, as we usually do in a watercolour painting, in the distance with the sky. I didn't want it to be too bright, the sky, and I wanted it to be quite light. So I'm using something like um, cobalt with a very, very small amount of burnt sienna. You could use ultramarine with burnt sienna. You just want to get this sort of grey colour. So this is basically a graduated wash, darker at the top and becoming lighter as it comes down and ending up really just putting water on going over the hills. When that was dry I painted the lake and this is more like a flat wash. You're putting the paint on, getting a sort of little edge there, a little, um, what do we call it now, I've forgotten, a bead of paint at the bottom of the wash. And you're putting this flat wash on, keeping the this bead wet all the time. I might have added a touch of water as I came down to the mix um, on the palette just to lighten it maybe at the bottom. So you're putting on basically this flat wash and it's the same mix as you did the sky, but it's darker. So you're getting more of the blue colour in there. Not being too particular, but don't try to keep it very simple and try not to go back into the wash or you'll start messing things up. With a fairly dry brush, I did soften the edges of the lake a little bit in areas. Now the next stage was doing the warm colours of this middle ground. And I used the side of the brush. This is called a dry brush, even though um, everything is quite wet. It's a dry brush technique using the side of the brush. The paint isn't too wet. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to vary the tones a little bit in that wash so it's not too flat leaving tiny bits of white, but that's not too important. So we're using raw sienna and burnt sienna here to give these nice autumn colours that um, we can see in the photograph in the middle ground. This will be a first layer, and you'll see later on in the video that I put some darker colours on this area. Looking at the foreground area in the photograph, I did see some sort of light red sorts of colours in there, so I put that on over the over the dry masking fluid. I like to, wherever possible, cover all the white areas and work around a painting. I find I can judge colours and tones much better than leaving large white areas. So now it was time to work the distant hills. The greens I'm using are cobalt with raw sienna, generally. Uh, this very very distant hill here. I put some um, sort of um, grey in there. It would ultramarine with a little bit of light red because that is the furthest hill. That needs to be the coolest. I could have gone a bit bluer actually but um, that's the way the paint worked on this one. This middle hill was cobalt blue with, with um, a lot of raw sienna in there. As you can see it was quite warm. I'm working all these hills wet into wet. So you'll see um, what I'm going to do is once I've put that first layer on, I've mixed up a stronger colour to dot in some of the um, marks that might stand as some of the trees on the hill there. And then as, I, as the paint is drying and I'm adding more of the colour, then it's staying more in place and we're getting some more darker areas. But the whole area here was work wet into wet, all in one go, which I think is the best way of working in the distance. Personally, I don't like to see lots of hard edges in the distance. We'll leave those for the foreground. And then these nice soft washers, wet into wet washers, will give this feeling of distance in your picture and recession. This green that I was using, which was the um, raw sienna and the cobalt, I kept some of it and used a very, very diluted version of it um, to put in some places in, in this middle ground because there was some green amongst the autumn colours there. So as, as you noticed, I do um, work around a picture quite a lot. Um, I don't like, or I tend not to actually finish areas completely. I like to move around the picture and do sort of 
half finished or three quarters finished and then keep moving around the picture and I do think this helps otherwise you can get too bogged down and too laboured on areas making them too detailed and overworking and you can't really judge one tone as I've said before or colour against another if you're leaving big unfinished areas and big areas of white. Now here on the foreground you can see the masking fluid is dry and I'm dropping in these colours that I'm seeing in the photograph. They're sort of going behind the masking fluid so I've got some of the greens that I'm seeing there going in, um, a few browns. The greens again are just darker versions of what I was using before. I'm dropping a bit more of the maybe some burnt umber, a bit more burnt sienna, some burnt umber mixed with ultramarine. So if you're working on something like this, um, just look very closely at the photograph, pick out some of the colours that, that are there already. You don't have to worry too much really about um, colours. If you look very closely, you get um, a lot of inspiration from nature and what's in front of you. What I did here was I added a few darker tones now to this uh, to this middle ground and I did this by um, just in places just damping the paint so that I wasn't getting too many hard edges. Again I wanted this area to be quite soft. It had these nice um, autumn colours, the, the burnt siennas and the raw siennas but there was also some browns going on in there so this is how I saw them and this is how I mixed them and um, to get this effect. And you can have a look at the photograph clip here to, to see what I'm trying to explain. So I'm continuing here um, with this sort of dry brush technique. Everything is still damp and I'm using a much darker mix now with the um, ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Not everywhere, dotting around and leaving some of those first washes showing through. It's very important to do that because I find it myself, it's very easy to work away and cover those first washes that you put on, but you want to see them sort of coming through. And you'll see as I'm working through this little bit that I, again, I mixed up some even darker paint and, um, and put it on so that you're getting some nice tonal differences, particularly between this foreground area, as you can see here, and the middle ground. It's these tonal differences that are really important that makes these, this foreground area stand out, hopefully, in your finished picture. I went back at this stage to, to finish this um, hill that was nearer to us. I had to leave it um, because the middle hill there was very wet and I didn't want them to blend into each other. I wanted this particular smaller bit of the hill that you see not to blend in with that middle one so that it would look as if it was further forward. Again, trying to always think about um, accentuating this feeling of recession in a picture. It's very important um, in a landscape painting, as I said earlier, if you're doing a realistic impression of an area to get this recession going in your picture and to always be thinking about it. You can see here that I'm working wet into wet still, so we've got these nice soft edges going on, but we've got this feeling of these three hills overlapping, hopefully. So when everything was dry, it was now the time to put in the trees. I'm going to be looking a little awkward painting these because I have to keep the painting in the same position because the camera is overhead. What I'd really like to do is to move the, um, the board that the paper's on around so that it would be much easier for me to paint these. So um, you can see it is going to be a little bit awkward for me, some of them which is why I'm looking a little bit hesitant <laughs> painting some of these. I do apologise for that, but I can't do anything about it. When you're painting all these trees, you'll be able to move your board and your paper around with great freedom. 
So this part of the uh, tutorial does get incredibly repetitive, so I will have speeded some of the areas up and there will be um, something written on the screen to tell you when I am speeding up the video. What I'm doing here is painting all these trees and trying to um, have some lighter than others. So I'm trying to get some different tones going in the in the trunks of these trees. Again, to get this um, feeling of recession in the painting. I'm looking at the photograph all the time, at the shapes of the trees and the position of the trees. I'm not painting every one, but um, I am taking my inspiration and help in um, the composition of this from a photograph that I've got. As you can see here, I'm going even a little bit faster, we're speed times eight. It did take um, a fair amount of time to do these. But as you can see here, um, again, after looking at the photograph, you can see that um, some of the trees that were further away were quite a lot smaller. Again, to, this is helping with the recession in the picture, so you can bear that in mind if you're using my photograph or a similar one of your own. Just, you know, just look very carefully at these things and um, it does certainly help when you come to do your painting um, and it does help. The more you look, the better your painting will become. That's what I found. It's all about observation. So again, I'm using a very small rigger brush here to put on some of these um, little branches and I'm trying to adjust the tones so it looks like some of them are behind the others, as you can see here. So looking again at the foliage, you can see that there were some leaves on these trees and um, you can see the green areas on there which is what I'm going to do the next stage I'm going to suggest some of those on there I think it's very important even if they're not there sometimes to suggest leaves and bits of foliage in the trees otherwise they can look very dead and they, they can make your painting look dead we have got some dead trees here and I think these add interest and uh, character to the scene I used a small brush on the side to suggest the leaves here and using the same greens that I've been using um, so I'm using cobalt blue with some raw sienna you could add a little bit of burnt sienna if you wanted to make it a little bit darker so I'm using some dry brush technique and I wouldn't exactly say dabbing it's sort of dabbing but it's dragging the brush in places just dragging it a little bit across the paper Using the side of the brush rather than the tip of the brush will make the strokes look more realistic rather than just dots. So again, at this um, faster speed here to um, relieve the monotony, I continued putting these leaves on the trees using the, um, the dry brush technique. You can vary the, um, the colour. Have a look at the photograph that you're using or whatever reference it is that you're using and see if you can pick out some different colours in there. I think a little bit later on in the video I added a little bit more raw sienna, put some brown leaves on there showing more of the autumn colours.
This was the stage now when I rubbed the masking fluid off and you can see the, the white shapes that are, that are left there. Sometimes you can leave quite ugly shapes if you're not quite as careful as you should be with the masking fluid, but if you do that, you can always go over with some dark paint on the areas that you didn't like. Um, I think this worked out quite nicely. When the masking fluid comes off though, it is very white, it's the white of the paper, which you don't always want, and I didn't want it here. I wanted these brambles and the stalks of the grasses to be more of a sort of a raw sienna, very light brown colour. So I went over those areas, as you can see here, with a very small brush. Working on this foreground area, again I was looking at the photograph and um, looking at the colours that were in there and picking them out. Again I saw some little bits of light reds in there. There were definitely these lovely autumn colours with the yellows and some nice light green colours in there as well, which I thought contrasted quite nicely with the other colours that I got on there. And mixing up some cadmium orange, if you don't have that, um, a red and a yellow, and then some darker reds and very dark oranges in there were the last was the last thing that I uh, that I did on this foreground as you can see for the leaves. I did a little bit of splattering. Um, if you looked at the leaves on the pictures, they do have this sort of mottled effect. Some of them, so I did a little bit of splattering. Um, covering up the paper because I'm very messy with the splattering and it's always a good idea to do that. Here I did add a little bit more raw sienna and some burnt sienna to the leaves to give it more of an autumn feel and there were these um, areas in the photograph as well. And a little bit more work on the foreground. I didn't want to overwork this at all because I wanted it to sort of blend in and, and be part of the overall picture which is quite simple. So I hope you don't feel I overdid this foreground. I added a little bit of dark under some of the bramble shapes as you can see here with the rigger. And then I brought some of the um, brambles themselves over some of the leaves to give a little bit of overlap and finally with a small brush I just added some different brush strokes to stand for some of the the browner darker leaves that were sitting there between the uh, between the autumn leaves. So this was the final picture I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I hope you learned something from it, um, particularly as a beginner I think you can see a lot of these landscape scenes that are extremely cluttered and you don't really know where to start and I hope this has broken down some of the areas and helps you understand a little bit more maybe how to tackle them. As always if you do like my channel then do subscribe and you won't miss anything that's coming up in the future.